This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Thank you for making our show a possibility. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Jamie and E here again. Yep. Back at you. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, I gotta start the sound effects. You really like to do those sound effects, but I do. Yeah, but we're really excited to be back with you here. I'm so excited to have E with me again. And I'm happy to be here. And guess what, y'all? Hmm. Can I tell them what happened? Yeah, yeah. What had happened? What had happened? <laughs> what had happened was our wives met. We yes. had a double date blot double. Double blind intro date? Yeah. Meeting? Yeah, thing? I guess. Well, I knew you and you knew me. <laughs> no, that was our second meeting. So we were old we right. were old vets at right. that point. Yeah. But. Yeah. But yeah, we, we went for drinks and some snacks and it was fun. We had and the wives time. met. And the wives and got along. It's fucking amazing. And so is Erin. And we Yeah, we should keep them. It's the beginning of a beautiful relationship. It was really fun. Yeah. And we did that because we did a cool we had- thing. A DNR takeover. Oh, yeah. See, there I so, go. There you go again. So a lot of you at home know uh, the Derek and Romaine show. They're friends of ours. And Romaine has been on a couple times to talk about Romaine's family. And, and sometimes we record at the DNR studios. And we like to um, play tricks on each other a lot. And also, we're going to steal the, the EGOT of the awards for the podcast, People's Choice Awards, from them. They're not going to win. We keep stealing it from them. We're going to keep doing it. But we have a friendly rivalry, and um, Derek and Romaine do cruises for their listeners. They, like, do cruise ships, so they were away on the cruise ship, and they, they reached out and asked if we wanted to do a DNR ovaries takeover, and we were like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, but I also would like to go on the cruise. Can we do that next They've time? They've never invited us to that. I think they draw the line somewhere. I'm not sure. But um, we just sat down and talked for an hour on the radio with their producer, Guy, JB, uh, JB, who was so much fun, and we he had a was. really great time, and we talked about stuff that wasn't just queer families. So that was like refreshing, and we vibed. Yeah, we did. It was a good vibe. Yeah, I could have talked for a whole other hour. I couldn't believe it. I wrote down all these notes, didn't even use them. We were just talking. Didn't use it because then before you know it, he's like, "Okay, you have about three minutes." And I'm like, "What? We <laughs> you just didn't even sat get out. To, you didn't even get to talk about the topic that you came in wanting to talk about because we were just riffing. We were having so much fun. I know. But we're gonna let you know what what we're gonna do with that episode. Uh, more to come on that. But yes. after we did that, we got an email from a DNR listener that is the. Most heartwarming, lovely email of my life. I, I read it in the morning and I, I was having a rough morning like I usually am. And it brightened my day at least a little bit. <laughs> it brightened mine too when you sent it. I was like, oh my God, they like me. They really like me. Oh my God. Maybe Jamie yeah. will keep me. Yeah. Like- um, well, you're sticking around. You're not going anywhere. Yeah, but no. so this is, so Curtis wrote this. Um, I'll read a little bit and then maybe you read a little bit. Curtis wrote, "Okay, I want to let you know how much I enjoyed your takeover show on Derek and Romaine this week. I had heard the original hosts, Jamie and Robin, as guests on DNR and thought you both fantastic guests, but I never thought I'd be able to connect with your show. I'm a single gay guy with no intentions of ever having children, so I couldn't imagine that if these ovaries could talk would ever appeal to me. Also, this is funny, Romaine threatened us listeners with stories about moving dirt in her yard if we weren't uber loyal to the Derek and Romaine show. <laughs> She's crazy. Okay. So listening to your takeover show took me by complete surprise. Not only did your speaking style make me feel like we've been friends for years, honey, but the show was highly entertaining and informative. You have a new fan in me for sure. I'm a DNR plus 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 oh, plus. plus subscriber. So now I'll be downloading all the past episodes I can access as well as keeping up with new episodes with E as they are released. Thank you for opening my awareness to topics I never thought I'd find interesting but have found that your stories touch me in my feels. That's my favorite Curious. part. Touch me in my we feels. We touch him we in his feels. We hope to touch you all yes. in your feels. And I don't normally go touching single gay guys, but <laughs> Curtis, we t- <laughs> thank you for Look. telling us that we touched you in your feels. Ooh, I like it. I like it. And we are really, we are really rambling. And everybody is on the train right now like, oh my God, get to the story. So um, just wanted to say, please feel free to send us your feedback as well, especially if you like how um, the new Ovaries 2.0 is going. And you can always, always put up a new rate and review wherever you listen to your pods about how much you love the new vibe and direction of the show. That's very helpful for us. And that would never hurt. Never, never. Do it. Else we're going to make you do something with dirt. (laughs) 
Because <laughs> Romaine hit the dirt thing. I was tying it in. Did yeah, you get the tie it? Okay. I like that. Thank you. That was great. Okay. We have to say a special thank you to our newest Patreons. And let me tell you guys, at home, you guys are really stepping it up with the Patreon game. For real. So let's see if we can do these names without butchering them. A special thank you to... Jade Berrios. I think that was very well said. And that's a pretty name, Jade Berrios. Rachel Garland. Thank you, Rachel Excellent. Garland. That sounds like a 40s movie star. Yes. Doesn't Marka it? Farrington. Marka Farrington, who is also a guest and is coming up in an episode very soon, guys. Oh, nice. Yeah. Marka. Mm-hmm. And um, Kim Gould. I think I said that right. Kim yes, Gould. Yes, I believe you did. Yes, Sounds like, a, so. like a professor. I'm Professor yes. Kim Gould. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then there's, I'm going to try this. Please forgive me if I don't say it right, but it's Kayla W2. Yeah, or Kyla. Kyla or Kayla W2. And then lastly, but not least, definitely not least, Genevieve. Thank you all for joining you. our Patreon community. And if you out there want to help us make this content for LGBTQ families, you can join our Patreon community and do just that. You're going to do a good thing and get bonus content. And what do they get at the gestational carrier level, E? Video interviews of most episodes drop a day early. Yes. So head on over to patreon.com forward slash ovaries talk to join. To join. I think I got a little bit of energy now because uh-huh. I'm excited to talk about Brandy. Brandy. Brandy is back for a Where Are They Now? So you might remember Brandy from season six, episode seven, titled A New Traditional Family. She came on and her and her gay BFF made a family together, Lawrence. And we uh-huh. focused on how they went about it, how they showed up in the world as a new traditional family. Lawrence coined that term, and I just love it, the new traditional family, because that's what we're all creating here. I love it. But she wanted to come back. And what, what did she want to come back for, E? She wanted to come back to talk a little bit more and go into depth about her birth experience mm-hmm. and the microaggression she faced as a woman of color through her son's birth and beyond. Mm-hmm. By the way, y'all, trigger warnings, things get kind of emotional. Things get emotional and yeah. uh, eye-opening and a really important story. Yeah, and the things that Brandy went through shouldn't happen to anybody. No. Let's just roll this tape. Helen? Helen? Hi, Brandy. Hi. Hi, Brandy. Hello. It is so wonderful to be here back with you. Mm-hmm. I'm so while. excited. Yeah. If you all haven't listened to Brandy's episode, you need to go stop, stop right now and go listen to Brandy's episode and then come back because it's an excellent episode and Brandy's story is really amazing. Love me some Brandy. Oh, thank Absolutely. You. I'm so happy to meet you in person, but I spent the last day or two like stalking you on the internet, <laughs> which... <laughs> You know, feels weird. I'm we call just it research it. now. It's we research, call it research. Yes. It's I was doing research. research. <laughs> and there's a lot of you to find, Brandy. So it's easy research. There is a lot of me to find. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're so beautiful to look at that it's not that hard to do this research either. Oh, thank you, darling. Thank you right. so much. Well, so, okay, before we get started, you have to give us your 30 second elevator pitch. And what I didn't mention is that I am going to put a little timer up so you can see your time. So you got 30 seconds to give us your Brandy elevator pitch of who you are and why you're here. All right. Are you ready for this? But don't worry, we, I will never cut you off. But... I have high expectations of myself. So <laughs> let's go. 30 seconds okay, on the clock. I have a feeling you're going to get this right on the dot. Okay. On your mark. Get set. Go. My name is Brandy Andrews. I live in Los Angeles, California. I am a Latinx, Afro-Latina um, gay mother. I co-parent with my gay best friend, Lawrence. Um, today I'm going to be talking about my pregnancy journey, everything that I went through personally. Um, and then also the attempted medical kidnapping of my son. (gasps) That is what happened to me when I gave birth. So I am going to be doing that. Oh, 30 seconds. You Good did job. That, but and wow. You, you just had a mic drop moment in there too that I was not expecting. I didn't know about that. There will be tears, ladies. There will oh, be gosh. tears. Okay, trigger oh, warning. Gosh. Trigger warning. Here we go. Oh my God. We have a lot to dig into. So let's let's get into this, Brandy. You want to just give everybody the overview of like how you came about to make your family, like a quick like. Yeah. So Lawrence and I, uh, he worked the front door at the Abbey. I was one of three female bartenders at the Abbey for a number of years. And uh, we were living down the street from each other in downtown. We crossed paths, became best friends. 
my girlfriend at the time moved out. Uh, I had a huge loft to myself. That's back then when the lofts were like 1800 in downtown. <laughs> yeah, not, not anymore. anymore. Um, but I had like a two story corner unit loft. It was beautiful. It was like $1,800. It was wow. fantastic. And I asked him to move in downstairs. Uh, we remained friends. Um, and then we just started planning everything. We filmed what happens at the Abbey on E, kind of documenting the beginning processes of our pregnancy journey. And then I think it was like two or three years after planning and writing our parental agreement and doing all these things. And after my car accident, I got hit by two drunk drivers, which took out the right side of my body. And so I had to recover from that. Oh God. Um, and then after my final surgery, where they said it would only be a four to six week recovery instead of a four to six month recovery. I just went to Lawrence and I said, I'm tired of waiting. Anybody I was talking to, I was like, I'm on this journey. I, I, I don't want a partner in this journey. I want to kind of do this by myself. Well, you know, with my best friend, but that's, 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 that's it in a nutshell. That's it in a nutshell. And that's kind of what we covered in your first episode with us. You and Lawrence talked about the decision to go forward and, and how you were best friends and then co-parenting together. And at that time, you guys were living together, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. We're currently in separate households, but if you see right out this window, Lawrence lives right over there. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still you're still making it work, which we're going to go into that a little bit later. But I think we really need to dig into your pregnancy yeah. story because we did not dig into that. And this sounds like there's a lot here. So let's do it. It was a lot. Yeah. Um, well, it first started off. I started feeling a funny sense of something. You know, I really didn't at the time when I was getting pregnant, there wasn't a whole lot of information about the mistreatment of women of color, mm -hmm. regardless of shade, uh, what they were kind of treating us like. And so I feel like I had been treated this way my whole life and it just became a norm, you know, mm -hmm. but my mom works you in have, the medical it field. <laughs> Thank I, you. I'm co-signing. I'm, co I'm sitting here like, <laughs> Thank you I'm, so I much. E. I'm not yes, yes, I'm with you. <laughs> Thank yes. you. I appreciate you. Thank you for seeing me. Um, I kind of built a thick skin around that. Um, everybody in my doctor's office was amazing. My doctor was amazing. She was very, you know, straight to the point, um, but still very, you know, kind. And there wasn't any places like Kind Body or I think right. it's like Astia or any, there wasn't any places like that, These especially places, for, yeah. for queer women or for gay families. There was none of that. So we were constantly getting like, oh, is your husband going to come in? Oh, mm. your wife is okay. And we're like, we're not, <laughs> we're not together. <laughs> right. And that's like a double whammy because you are coming in with a guy, with, mm -hmm. a, with a male presenting person, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for the most part, we got people who were really interested, like, oh my God, how did you have a baby? And I'm like, oh my God, why are you worried about my vagina? But <laughs> <laughs> we just say, you know, we did, we actually found an amazing company called Mosey Baby and they do mm -hmm. at home insemination kits. Yeah. Mark and Maureen were amazing. They, okay. you know, they That's sent us. Beautiful. It's so amazing. So we got all of our tests done, the blood work, the semen analysis, you know, making sure that our chromosomes matched, mm -hmm. um, not matched, but didn't, you know, have any contraindications. So we did all of those tests and got all those out of the way. And then they send you like two little Petri dishes, two mm -hmm. syringes. Now they've expanded and they have ovulation tests and pregnancy tests and it comes in a whole thing and they're just amazing and they're they're huge advocates of the lgbtq plus community yeah they've I actually tell sponsored you, us a couple times what year did you do this because my ex-wife and i tried to do the at home with a friend but this is 12 years ago so when i saw 2017 you on, when i saw you online with the box i started crying because we had to get all of that stuff individually mm -hmm. i'm so happy that it's gotten that at least that has shifted things have shifted yeah things have things, shifted tremendously in the last four years exactly like, like my since, friends going through their journey right now they're just like oh yeah we went to here and i'm like why was it so easy for you i know it's really crazy but then also things have shifted tremendously in like talking about how people of color are treated differently in the medical mm -hmm. field that's finally starting to get a little bit of traction and notice like in the last i feel like well i'm a white woman so i feel like for me I've been hearing about it more and more in the last year or two. Because the disparities are so huge at this point. It's yeah, hard to women ignore. are dying left and right yeah. because yes. yeah. medical professionals do not care. <laughs> right. You have to do your research on where you're having them. Like, honestly, if I could do it all over again, I would probably get a doula. Right. Wow. Somebody who could yeah. properly advocate and say no. 
because, right. you know, no, no, no shame or no um, shade to Lawrence, but he really did not advocate for me mm-hmm. I, because I don't think he knew how. Right. I think he thought because it was my body that it was my choice. Right. When I needed somebody to be like, no, she's scared. Mm-hmm. I need you to back up. She's asking a question, answer her question. And it was mm. simple things like, what if I don't take this medication? Am I going to go into labor? And that turned into, we're not going to help you have your baby early. And I said, that's not what I asked. That's not what I asked. I said, this medication that you're giving me for Braxton Hicks makes me sick. Mm-hmm. And I don't like taking medications. So if I don't take this medication, will I go into labor? I'm calling your doctor right now. <gasps> what the and I was just sucks. like, I'm sorry. I was sitting there sobbing. Oh, and well, I'm scared. Lawrence is scared. He's sitting in the corner. He's just like not saying anything. And so I had to then advocate for myself like I advocate for everyone else. And mm-hmm. so she gets my doctor on the phone. Well, it was one of the other. It was a female led practice. Thank God. Um, and so the other one of the other doctors jumped on and she was like, I, I asked her, I said, I'm not asking to deliver my baby early. I'm asking what will happen if I do not take this medication. Am I going to go into labor? Am I going to have my baby prematurely because I do not want that. Will I sit here and take the sickness if it causes me to go into premature labor? If I do not take it, yes, I will to keep my baby safe. Right. And so the nurse went on there, was talking a whole bunch of shit, but every other nurse before then had been like moderately okay. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until the actual birth where things took a turn. Um, I realized that we were, I mean, I had a Braxton Hicks scare. I was in the hospital for two days. They were shooting me full of steroids, like maybe four weeks prior to Mm -hmm. me giving birth, um, or like four to six weeks prior. It was around 22, 22, 23 weeks when they hospitalized me because they couldn't get my contractions under control. And so they were shooting me full of steroids, sending in NICU people telling me like what I could possibly prepare for. And so were they explaining the steps and writing it down for you and making sure you understood before they took you to the next level of the process? Like, did you feel pampered and cared for in the the sense of a pregnant No, and there was a giant crucifix staring at me from across the room. That's fun. That's always (laughs) fun. Yeah, Yeah. but I went to that hospital because that's where my doctor was at her Mm -hmm. doing her residency. Mm -hmm. And I wanted my doctor. Hey, E, listen, I know... That you go to therapy regularly, right? Mm-hmm. What would you say? What is the most important thing about therapy to you? Oh, my God. I feel like it's like 12,000 things. But I think the response time of my therapist in the mm-hmm. in-between, in the, what I've learned are the interstitial moments when it's mm-hmm. not our session, but then something comes up and I need an emergency reach out. And mm-hmm. they get back to me super fast. BetterHelp does that too. Yeah. I, and I really think it's super important for all of us to have someone to talk to right now. Absolutely. We have been in a freaking pandemic for the past hundred years. It feels like, I mean, like we are all very stressed. There's no way around it. And you know what? People don't always realize that physical symptoms like um, headaches, teeth grinding, even digestive issues can be indicators of stress. Even my four-year-old E is Mm. grinding his teeth lately. Not even kidding. Things are serious out here. On these streets. I know. When I get (laughs) stressed, my anxiety has been going through the roof Mm. for the past couple of years, honestly. Like, because pandemic, still in it. Yeah. I just, the anxiety, I got, I get hot. Of course, it could be hot flashes. Who knows at this point? Who knows? (laughs) But that's something to talk to a therapist about, too. It is. I mean, but it's also really important that you find the therapist that's right for you, which really isn't always easy. And that's what I love about BetterHelp, too. They make it really easy to switch therapists if you don't gel with someone, which is great. And see, that's really important. Mm -hmm. My relationship with my therapist, uh, it's like Mm -hmm. I have a team. My therapist is at the forefront of the team. I need to feel comfortable telling them about, you know, deep shit and also comfortable to tell them the truth. And thank God I do, because, you know, those weekly meetings are my lifeline. Mm, I get it. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed at home, BetterHelp is a great place to start. And I love that you can start from right where you are right now. You don't even have to get up off the couch if you don't want to. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Amazing. That's amazing. That's my favorite perk because I can decide to turn off the camera or put the camera Mm -hmm. on or chat or email 
And it's so mm-hmm. much more affordable than in-person therapy. Plus, no traffic, no cars, no very expensive gas. Mm-hmm. Um, so give it a try. See if online therapy can help lower your stress. It definitely helps lower mine. And if these ovaries could talk, listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash OCT. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash O-C-T. Get that therapy, guys. So, no, I didn't feel pampered. I felt and like things you can were get, being explained to me. You yeah. can get, you could request now. And I didn't know this either because we had hell, my ex and I, in the hospital. They actually sent me back home to get my paperwork before they would let me be in the room when she was delivering and she what was paperwork? in labor. Which paperwork? My ID, my wallet, because I ran out. I forgot my wallet. She was bringing the baby out. Yeah. Like, I just, I ran. And they said, even though we pre registered, we did everything in advance. They said, we don't understand this civil union shit. You got to go back home and get your wallet. So here she's on the table and I'm driving down 78 out of like 110. Thank God I made it back. And, you know, it worked out. But that's why we were we sued the state. And like we did a whole thing for the um, marriage equality. But I'm sad that it hasn't gotten better. I'm sad that it hasn't gotten better. But that's the thing. That's the thing. Um, Not only are you LGBTQ and you have to deal with those biases and the things that we deal with but then you have you're adding this layer on top of being a person of color and the shit you have to deal with as a person of color in the world not just the medical industry Mm -hmm. right i couldn't qualify for any government aid because lawrence and i lived in the same house and because he has hartley's last name they consider him the father and then they told me to sue him for child support and i said why am i suing him for child support when he supports his child i said this money is for me and they said, no, they were like mind blown. They right. had no idea. They had, they wanted me to send a notarized letter and all kinds of stuff. So I couldn't get any government assistance because I lived in the same house as Lawrence. And they were like, well, he should take care of it. Whoa. Yeah. So, so your baby daddy for child support, get your money from baby daddy. Who's taking care of his baby? I literally <laughs> asked him that. I said, why would I sue him for child support if he supports his child? I was like, we split 50-50. That's a good- I'm like, this is helpful for like the me. title of this episode. <laughs> like, it was the weirdest thing. Um, but yeah, so no, I didn't feel pampered or taken care of. They did explain medically to me. And so I've been around a lot of medical personnel. So I kind of got the gist of that. Um, I knew why they were, you know, telling me I had to take steroids. They were explaining it to me. They were like, this is going to help his lungs, his eyes, his brain, his this, his that. And I'm like, okay, cool. Um, Cause I don't let nobody come near me with a needle ever. And I'm like, no, the doctor was like, we have to take your blood. I was like, no, <laughs> you're not taking anything. <laughs> and so thankfully the contractions got under control. I wasn't dilating. Everything was great. And then come the birth. Um, they, all the nurses were like, asking us questions, so on and so forth. But there was this one nurse who was next to me and she said they were taking Hartley somewhere. I went through, you know, got my epidural, did everything. My doctor came in, popped the bag. Hartley was out in like 12 minutes. Um, Yeah. Pregnancy was hell. Birth was fine. (laughs) And you did it. You did a vaginal birth or was it a C-section? I did a vaginal birth. I actually like, my doctor was like, give me your hands. I was like, why? I was like, I don't want to touch that. Oh, he was going to put your hand on the. the So she, she put, no, no, no. She put my hands underneath Hartley's underarms and I pulled him out of my body. Oh, Oh (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Okay, so and she's like, I, pull them onto your chest. And I was like, what am I doing? This thing's so warm and sticky. It was awful. I don't know why I'm grossed out, but I'm like, <laughs> it's beautiful, though. It is beautiful. It's is it? <laughs> is it? I don't know. I, I don't know. things out of my body, so I really don't know. Uh, good it was for you, Brandy, for doing it. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was cool, though. After I was like, oh, I actually, like, I was the first person to, like, touch and hold my yeah, child. That's you know? cool. So that was really cool. Um, And then, you know, I told Lawrence, we had had a discussion prior. I had typed out everything like my birthing story. I'm like, yes, give me the epidural. That's number one. (laughs) Give it to me. I mean, anyone who doesn't do it, that's your journey. I respect it, but give me the drugs. Okay. Everybody will be a lot happier. That's the Um, one needle you would be okay with, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And I think the needle hurt worse than the birth. So yeah. Lawrence is over with the baby. I said, the second he leaves my body, you do not leave his side. Mm-hmm. And so they take Hartley over. He made like one little noise and then he wasn't crying, but everything was fine. He was just calm. He, he was true. like, 
I'm like, Lawrence, I don't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, everything's fine. He's laying here. And he was talking to him and they had a moment and the lady was like, oh, we're going to do ABC, XYZ. We're going to take this, that, and the other. And I said, okay. She said, oh, we'll test his blood for this, that, and the other. And I said, oh, I was like, you guys do that? And I was like, I didn't know that. That wasn't explained to me. I said, so what happens if you find drugs in a baby system? Just asking a question. What happens? Uh What would happen to a mother if that, you know? And she's like, well, we would take your baby away. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, thankfully I don't do drugs, (laughs) (laughs) you know? And so that nurse, I knew it was that nurse. And so I get downstairs and... They asked me if I wanted to go home that day, but I obviously wanted to rest and something in me was like, go the, go home. Mm. But then my body was like, no, you need to like stay. And there was no lactation consultant that came in and taught me how to breastfeed. My mom had to show me. That's horrible. Yeah. They were pumping me full of like Norcos and giving me pain meds. And I'm like, I don't like pain meds, but this right. pain is too excruciating. So I have to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a nurse comes in and says that they're holding me. Because somebody from CPS came in and said, so we found antidepressants in your system. I said, I don't take antidepressants. I don't take medication. I barely take Advil. I got hit by two drunk drivers, had the right side of my body taken out. And I only use marijuana maintenance. I never took a single Dilaudid, Norco, Vicodin. I didn't take any of it. They gave me morphine. They were giving me everything. And I never took it. Did you say all this to this nurse? Yep. I said it to the CPS person. They're like, oh, okay, well, we have to, you know, figure this out. Da, 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 da. And they held me there and didn't tell me why they weren't releasing me. And were you allowed to see the baby? Well, the baby was with me now okay. in hospital. Well, at least here in California, the baby doesn't leave the mother, but they do okay. put a little like monitor. Yeah. Monitor yeah. on the baby. So it makes a noise. If somebody takes your baby out the door, I'm like, what the fuck? Oh my God. So, right. Um, <laughs> So my baby had this thing on his anklet. I'm like rushing up and motions up and down. And then I told the nurse, I said, okay, like, I know that you guys are searching for something. You guys can test me. I don't take antidepressants. So I don't know what to tell you. And so they tried to keep us there over and over. And is Lawrence at this point, because he's your partner in this, right? And he's my mom your partner, was there. partner. Okay. So was she able to help advocate for you at all? Because mm -hmm. you're at your most vulnerable point and I'm glad your mom was there because- Oh, it gets worse. Oh no. (laughs) It gets worse. I'm I'm holding my breath, Brandy. I cannot believe this. So we're supposed to get released. I go up to the nurse's station and I say, hey, like what is going on? And while she's doing that, she's on the phone. She's saying, yeah, she threatened me and said that if um, if I don't tell her what's going on, there's going to be problems. What? Fuck out of here. Like, right in front of I you. stand right in front of me and she's, oh, she's standing right here. <gasps> and so I look at my mom and my mom looks at me and I'm holding my mom's hand because I know how my mom gets Uh-oh. Yes. when one of her kids Uh-oh. is, you know, and she goes, my mom goes, what? And I grab her hand and I'm like, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> don't give her mm. the satisfaction. And then a security guard walks up to me and says, oh, like what's going on here? And I'm like, I'm trying to get information on why I'm not being released. And the security guard goes, well, um, I'm going to need you to go sit in the lobby. I said, sit in the lobby. I just gave birth two days ago. She goes, well, she said you were threatening her. I'm not going to sit in the fucking lobby. I gave birth two days ago. My son is in there. I need to know why you guys are holding me. And so they were like, okay, well, go ahead. Go back into your room and we'll be right there. Nothing for hours. I recorded everything. I had a camera set up. I recorded everything. We were actually filming nine months with Courtney Cox. And so uh, we had those there for us. So I'm recording everything and they're saying, yes, we found antidepressants in your blood. And I'm like, I do not take medication. I don't know what your tests are saying, but I do not take medication. Also is having antidepressants in your blood a reason for you to not be able to take your baby home? Like, I don't even understand. I don't understand the correlation here either. Neither did I. That's ridiculous because women can have antidepressants because if you're on it, and I only know this from my wife and I and our our circles around this journey, they don't want a lot of women to get off of antidepressants because the effects would be too, it's too much. It's uh, in the opposite direction. So even Mm -hmm. the antidepressant excuse is bullshit. It's crazy. And at this point, like I'm thinking of everything I've ever taken. I'm like, what have I done? But I've never, I'm like, I've taken Advil. 
You know, I've, I take the medication that my doctor prescribed me for my HG, which was the, the little anti-nausea pills, which I was mm-hmm. on my whole entire pregnancy. And I was like, look at my medical records. Yeah. Look at all the things that are on there. See if anything has that ingredient on it. It'll explain it to you. you it's not. And it, yeah. And it's not like you're buying antidepressants on the black market. Like it's not like. So, <laughs> so they try to keep me there. I go back in and Lawrence is freaking out. I'm freaking out. My mom is like, you both need to stay calm. Lawrence is on the phone with his mother because she works in the court systems. So we're like making sure that everything's, you know, taken care of. Like we had to go through this whole scenario that if they weren't going to release Hartley to us, he would go directly to my mother. Like it was a whole thing. Oh my God. So the next, a, uh, a Mexican nurse comes in and me and my mom start speaking Spanish to her. Mm-hmm. And we're like, we know exactly what this is and you need to fix it. You need to make sure that you go and you tell them to release us because I am not on any medication. I said, I will go sign something under oath stating that I am not on any medication. So they were not trying to release my baby. I was like, get this fucking thing off my child. Take this thing off of me. I'm fucking leaving. Mm -hmm. She's like, okay, okay. Let me go get your paperwork. She's like, I'm sorry. She was giving some bullshit excuse. And me and my mom looked at her. We were like, we know what this is. And you're not going to sit here and make us believe otherwise. It's either because we're people of color Mm -hmm. or because we're gay. So one of the two, somebody Mm -hmm. called CPS. Um, and I was like, and I didn't threaten that nurse. I said, if I threaten that nurse, that nurse will be in a corner crying. I believe that too. <laughs> Let's just state that fact there. But can we backtrack for a second? You had just given birth and that's one of the most vulnerable times for your physical body, your emotional body, psychological. And they're pulling the shit, which they had tests before it you gave birth. Worse. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. I just want to make sure we recap a little bit for everybody. Yeah, because it's- this is like, what the fuck? So we finally get out, go home. I'm like crying, sobbing. Thankfully, we get out of the situation and I go home. And three days later, we go for the checkup to take the baby. Mind you, why? Why do I have to go? (laughs) Why can't you come to me? I'm ripped from stem to stern and you want me to get in a car. (laughs) That's that's our health system, right? I had to take the we took the baby in a snowstorm. I go in and then the pediatrician that we had chosen, an amazing Armenian woman, she was great, um, then tells us that we have to put a little urine bag on our newborn baby so that they can test his urine for drugs. What? I'm done. No way. I, that's, I'm sorry. That's... Check this. He tests negative. Okay. Of course you wanna, he does. Of you want to know what tested positive in my system? What? The sleep aid, over-the-counter sleep aid that the doctor told me to take because I couldn't get any sleep. Wow. So that's what they found. And the whole time you're saying, check my radical records, check my medical records. It's going to be one of those things you gave to me. That's what you're seeing. Yep. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So it tests negative. Were you like, I told you? Yeah. Was there a moment of reckoning? When I was talking to the doctor, she was like, they're not looking for marijuana. They're not looking for that. They're looking for hard drugs. And I'm like, I don't take drugs. And she's like, I know this. And I was like, so why are they saying that I'm taking antidepressants when I'm not? Mm -hmm. And I'm literally saying, check my medical record, call my doctor. Um, And nobody listened. And they were trying to call CPS and have our child taken away from us because they said I was on antidepressants. Is this a general practice for the hospital? Like if if you were to go back to them and ask them, how many times has this occurred? Because then you can kind of definitely make sure that it is what it is, right? I got out of there as fast as I could and I never looked back. I I understand. Yeah, that makes sense. I had somebody ask me the other day when I was telling them a story, they were like, why didn't you fight? I said, why would I? Why would I give them a reason to take my child away? Right. You go back and they find something else or... Mm -hmm. Fine, quote unquote. Right, right, right. I was like, there's no way I'm going to beat the medical system. (laughs) It's right. unfair. It's unjust. It always has been. I mean, things are getting better because people are branching off into their solo. TE. you look so stressed. <laughs> I am, but you know what it is, Brandy? When I was <laughs> listening to your story, I was watching the NBC or the interview that's online. That I, and I, I was like, this is so exciting. It's so wonderful. And I had this moment of things have changed. She probably had a beautiful experience in the hospital and they were wonderful because they treated us like black dykes from (laughs) hell or something. I don't know what it was. Uh but So this is breaking my heart because this was so much late. It just, this is brand new and it still is happening. 
Yeah. There needs to be big <sighs> I'm change. Sorry. I'm it sorry. Doesn't, it doesn't matter what shade you are at all. I'm sorry you went through that. I know that had to be the worst. But I got to tell you, that baby boy of yours, <laughs> that baby of yours, let oh, me he's, tell you. He's oh, so delicious. So, oh, delicious. He like, can you imagine somebody trying to rip that out of your arm? No, you're going to make no. me cry. Yeah, you're totally. <laughs> you're I don't cry. cry. I'm a G. I can't cry. Oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh, my I didn't, God, I Brandy. couldn't sleep. I didn't trust anybody taking Hartley out. I didn't even trust his own father taking him out for a ride. Oh. Of course, my mom. And that ultimately it. had effects on our friendship. Because yeah. was, but like I didn't trust him. And so I was traumatized for about the better half of a year. And then... After that, a very vindictive individual that I had in my circle used it against me <laughs> when I tried to cut her out of my life because she was getting too overly attached to my child. And CPS came knocking at my door again. Wait, what? And this person tried to say that I was taking drugs and I smoked weed with my child in the room and that I didn't feed my kid. I'm like, you can look at my child and know that that's not true. Oh, my God. Living life while brown or black in this country is just a whole different experience. Yeah. yeah. Oh it's scary. God. And I'm thankful I'm that sorry. none of my friends had to go through that. But, God. yeah, this well, is my first time ever sharing this. God, <laughs> thank you for what? trusting us. Thank, that's yes. amazing. Thank you. Yeah. What what happened with the second CPS visit? Like I have a friend that works um, in child development for the government. So she came in with all her paperwork, with all her everything as a witness, talked to the CPS person. They looked around the house. I had to strip my baby naked to, oh, so no. that she could check for bruises or scratches or any signs of abuse. The fuck? So and you wonder why stop. we're angry. Right. <laughs> I mean, and what a way to... Give somebody postpartum. I mean, right. Jesus. I was, I would sleep on Hartley's floor. I would sleep on the chair because I felt like any knock on the door was somebody that was going to come take my baby away from me. Mm. And that's what I lived with for the better half of like about two years. It's wow. only recently gotten better with therapy. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Me that's too. why these stories need to be told. We need to tell the good, the bad, the ugly, the really ugly, and the insane. And the insane, thank you, so that we can call attention to this stuff. This is freaking insane, and I'm so sorry. Well, let's take it to where, where you're at now, with mm -hmm. because you, you and Lawrence were living together, and you were doing the co-parenting thing, and when we left off, you had just met your girlfriend. I, I think you're with the same girl. I am. And so things have changed a little bit for you. What's going on? Yeah, we lived together now when I first, uh, when we first got together, Hartley was maybe had just turned a year old. And I said, to, I said to everybody, I said, I'm not dating until after Hartley's a year, because I don't want I'm not trying to deal with the ups and downs of uh, trying to figure somebody out. And then also breastfeeding and I don't feel sexual. My titties right. are leaking. It's oh, not titties, a situation where a I want it's only somebody a problem on for y'all. By the way, it's it, only a problem for the leaking breast. It's never a problem for the partner, by the way. <laughs> that was a lot of information, but please continue. <laughs> Mine have never gone back either. It is something. It's something. But I remember when we talked to you, you were like really, really cautious about how you were going to bring your girlfriend around. And you wanted to make sure that she was there to stay before you really brought her around Hartley and like how so how did that all end up because I was always curious I mean it ended up great you know she respected the fact that you know we are Hartley's parents she never crossed any types of boundaries she wanted she told me repeatedly even though there was times where I was like yeah just do that and she was like no <laughs> she's like I want this to happen organically I want him to come to me organically I want you know and she took the time to really set that pace you know and then there was one day because you know I guess all light people look alike, um, even though she has black hair and blue <laughs> eyes, um, that Hartley looked at her and he was like, mama. And we were like, <laughs> I was like, oh, no. And she was like, no, 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 no. And I was like, you know, you can call her blue. You can call her mama blue. You can call you like mama blue, mama blue. And then that's what he stuck with. He stuck with mama blue. I was like, you can call her Nicole. Like, and we would make sure to tell him those things. Like, you don't have to call her Mama Blue. You can call her that Mama Blue, Mama Blue. There was even <laughs> one adorable, time. by the way. Mama Blue. I, I know, it. right? 
So Hartley's now four, right? Mm -hmm. Did you have a lot of back and forth with the um, circumcision decision? Oh, so yes and no, because I kind of let Lawrence take the reins on that. I was watching a documentary at one time and I saw it and I was like, no, absolutely not. And I didn't know I was going to see it. Um, So I was traumatized, but also I don't have a penis. Right. So I don't know about the maintenance of it and what effects it can and can't have, and it can hurt them later on. And so I asked his perspective and he was just like, he was like gung ho on it. He was like, he right. has to be circumcised. And I was like, okay. I right. was well, like, but, but if he gets circumcised, you go with him. And then I'm going to let him know that you're the one that chose it. <laughs> because This was all daddy. This was all daddy. Hartley didn't even cry. Wow. Well, you come from an advantage because you have a man to give perspective. Yeah. Whereas me, me and my wife and, and E, you and your ex-wife, you didn't have, we didn't, like, I grappled. I just didn't want to do it. I, I just wanted to it. say no, because I was like, oh, no, it's too barbaric. And my cousin came to me and he's like, look, this kid has two moms, black, and y'all already old. And he was like, don't make him have lesbian dick. And I was like, right. what? <laughs> lesbian dick? He said he can't have lesbian dick. Let him have a penis like the rest of his family. And the whole family ends up weighing in on this conversation. Right. Because they all decided that he's family. And none of the guys in the family have not been circumcised. Everybody so everybody's circumcised. circumcised. Yeah. yeah. So my family was the one. Because they were like, he'll stand out. It'll be bad for him. And we were like, Well, Fine. so, I mean... I had this conversation with one of my other friends, too, that had a boy. And she was like, why is there just going to be a day that he's just going to be out here with his penis like this? And everyone's going to be like, yours is different. First of all, why are you showing your penis to people? Like but I that? think I think they do in the locker I room. I don't do. know. I mean, I-, I mean, that's that's fine. That's fine. But for me, what the way Lawrence put it is that bacteria can get mm-hmm. in the UT, like a lot of different things can happen you mm-hmm. know, with the skin and pulling it back. And I was like, look, I already have to wipe a penis as it is. So that right I was there. afraid of cleaning. I was afraid I wasn't going to clean it right and w- when when the baby was a baby. But also the, the bacteria thing is what really made the decision. But to each his own. And if you didn't do it, yeah. you know, like, good for you. Everybody's doing what's best for right. them. Everybody has their own journey. And that's right. what I feel like, too. Like, there's a lot of stuff now in the mom community where people have stopped shaming mm-hmm. other parents. For the decisions that they make, like some of my friends' kids are not vaccinated, and that's fine. Right? Go ahead. You don't have to vaccinate your kid. That's your kid. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your kid. Right. But what I will do is stay away during COVID. Right. <laughs> right. There you go. We all have our decisions. We all have our choices. Exactly. And we're all snowflakes, right? We're all different. Everyone's journey is going to be absolutely different than someone else's journey. Mm-hmm. There's no one size fits all. Case in point: this podcast and how every single over 160 episodes completely different. Completely different. Even if it's the same exact kind of story, completely different. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Now that you're at this point with it, Mm -hmm. are you thinking you might want to do it again? No. Okay. (laughs) Gotcha. Okay. Moving on. Hell no. (laughs) Hell no. You're done. No. One and done. I'm done. done. I'm done. Even my girlfriend was like, baby, I can see why you're done. She was even like, it was a real discussion in our relationship. Because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't want to carry again. I don't want to go through that. I drank the Kool-Aid. They sold me the dream. I'm so good. Right. And so she respected that. And then it was just a conversation of whether she was going to carry and when that was going to happen. And I was like, I want to wait till Hartley's at least five. Mm-hmm. I have to, I, I wanted to make sure that he could identify emotions that he could communicate to me like, hey, I'm feeling this way or, hey, I'm not liking this you know, and that he can properly communicate with me. Now that we live together, she's like, I don't know. She vacillates. She's like, I don't know if I want this. She's like, I, I'm, I think I'm okay with adopting. And so she's, she's just like, I want to have a, like a little black girl and, and raise her to, you know, know that she's beautiful and tell her every day that she's gorgeous and she can do anything no matter, you know, no matter what. And I said, we then can absolutely adopt. Because fortunately okay. or unfortunately, there are a lot of black and brown kids out there that need to be adopted. And there so. are. There are. And mm-hmm. with the backgrounds that her and I both come from, very different. You know, me being raised very much Latina and she's, you know, my my boogie dumb Bronx, Boston baby over here. Love her to <laughs> death. Um, and so, you know, she comes from a much rougher upbringing than, than I did. But I, I can see why she wants that. And so it was a real discussion in our relationship. Like, to the point where I was like, well, maybe I'm not the person for you because I don't want a baby right now. Mm. I don't want a baby for another couple of years. So if this is something that you have a plan for, then 
then we need to talk about this because I don't want to keep you from your dreams. I want you to have everything that you want, but I can't give that to you right now. So, wow. Good, healthy relationship alert. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see the intentionality happening right here? I would just like everybody at home to take note of the intentionality that we LGBTQ <laughs> folks <laughs> put into every single decision regarding our relationships and our family. I said, I don't want to live with anybody until we've been together for two to three years. I don't want to do any. I don't want a U-Haul. I'm not that <laughs> lesbian. I cannot do it. <laughs> and I was like, and plus I have a kid. So it's not something that I can just be like, yeah, let's make it together. We'll figure it out. Like, that's not how this is going to go. Have you always been like that? No. Good for you. Good for you, though. You learned it. Mm-hmm. And you can set and those I mean, boundaries. Thankfully, she's, you know, she's amazing. She's so far in her healing journey. And, and when she told me, she's like, babe, I really think you need to start your healing journey and go to therapy. Like I, I just listened. And I was like, if I feel like it's going to make me a better person, you know, and being raised with no boundaries, um, putting men above everything, because that's how the culture was when I grew up is like Mm -hmm. the men are right, men are everything. Mm -hmm. And so that even created some conflict in the relationship with with Lawrence as well, because I had no boundaries and mm-hmm. he didn't know he was doing anything wrong. Mm-hmm. So it was like I didn't speak up and, and things of those sorts. But the way that me and Nicole really started to gauge our relationship and where things were going and how to ask those questions was by playing card games. We play those card games where you ask your partner questions. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I, have, we ask, I have one of those on a shelf. I need to pull that down. You got to dust that off. And we, <laughs> we have the intimacy deck, the relationship deck, the core values, the, you know, well, we, when we first started dating, we were just looking it up on the computer, on, on the internet. Mm-hmm. And we would just sit and ask, like, favorite color, favorite childhood memory. And if we didn't want to ask something like me, I'm very much a Latina. Like, you talk to me about your exes. I'm going to find them. I'm going to cut them. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, she not. No, she not. She's mildly, serious. mildly, mildly, just a little mildly. bit of a little stalking, a light stalking, maybe mildly. I'll, you know, I got a lot of other. I got Colombians. I got Dominicans. I'm like, we're all a little. Boop, boop. Um, and so, you know, when we would get to those questions, I'd be like, pass, <laughs> pass. You know, anytime we didn't want to answer something, but we always made sure that we came back to it. So we wouldn't start on a new deck until we had finished that entire deck. Oh, that's a great idea. That's some really They have one for kids advice. too. I should get that. I started listening to this book a friend suggested to me, which was uh, how to speak to your kids so they'll listen. Oh, I have it. I have yeah, the book. I was listening that's- on audiobook. I was listening to that. And then when Hartley gets old enough, I think it's like four or five when you can start those card mm-hmm. games because mm-hmm. they can they retain a lot more memories. Yeah. You know, I just, I, I talk to Hartley. I'm like, yeah. well, you know, how do you feel about this? And can you identify this and what happened? And, mm-hmm. you know, I'll ask him questions instead of being like, no, this is how you feel. Right. Because right. that's how Good I was always told. Well, and that's the thing. That's the beauty of our families and especially your family, Brandy, because, because you've created your family in a very unique way, even unique to us LGBTQ folks. I mean, you, you had a baby with your best friend, your gay best friend. And you're figuring out this whole co-parenting situation with a new spouse on your end. And I don't know what's happening with Lawrence, but I'm sure there's 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 all kinds of things in the mess. So the the fact that you've had to map this all out for you has really created a real good sense of boundaries and of like, you know, where you're going. I I feel like I mean, together. (laughs) Sometimes I know where I'm going. Sometimes I'm just fucking winging it. Yeah, but but the the point is you have to. You have to figure these things out because it's not, there's no map for us. There's no map for you. Yeah, Lawrence right? and I have like a parental agreement that we update every single year, like down to, you know, we get one one week a year where we take a mom and a dad vacation where mm-hmm. we just know that person's going to be gone for a week. And now mm-hmm. like with separating households, it's like we're figuring out like what days of the week. And so for this next, you know, however many months it takes, um, we are just splitting custody down the middle. Hartley was already with me in the beginning of the week. And then I work towards the end of the week. So, and then Lawrence is flip-flopped. He works in the beginning of the week and his, his week slows down towards the end of the week. So it works out. And we do a family walk two days a week on, on transition days. We go to the park, he runs around, he sees mom and dad together. Like you know, and he's been asking too. like, he's like, oh, are you going to come to the park with us? Or, oh, are you going to do this? And, you know, he'll say, mama, I want to stay with you. And I'm like, baby, you got to share your love. <laughs> Get out of my house. Go, go to daddy's, go to daddy's house. Daddy's turn. It's a daddy's <laughs> I just turn. Sleep. 
Oh my God. But I'm like, we got to share our, and he's like, love. <laughs> oh, baby. So what is something that you think, what's been the most joyful part of this mommy experience for you? Like on a day to day basis, what is the part that makes you go, yes, it's all been worth it? Every time Hartley learns something new and he retains it, it could be as simple as, yes, mama, or no, mama, or no, thank you, or I'm okay. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that all the things that I taught him about body consent, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I was teaching him body consent at two. And I was mm-hmm. like, hey, you tell mama or dad if somebody and he'll go touches your penis or butt. And I'm like, that's right. <laughs> there you I was go. like, and if you don't want to hug somebody, you go and he goes, not right now, please. He's like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Like when Sweet. he does those little things, like when he's like, oh, I want to read a book or when he just to see his beautiful little brain retain so much knowledge and have it kind of re- like reflected back at me, it, it, it makes me very happy to see how happy he is. No matter like how many times I get in my brain, like I'm going to traumatize him. I'm going to do this. And this is going to happen. Ah, yeah. you know, you yeah. know, and that's when I go to therapy and I stop putting my shit on my child. This has been a delight. Um, Absolutely. So wonderful. Thank you, Brandy, for sharing this story. Really. Mm. I love it. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Woo. That was intense. It really was. God, I learned I learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah. She's an amazing, strong, super mm-hmm. smart, beautiful person, I know. person I'm, mom. I am so glad that Randy wanted to come back and share that side of the story. It's important, right? And um, since we talked, I have I have created all those like feelings charts that we talked about in the yes. episode. I have them. They're right by my son's bed. I've been trying to talk about feelings with him. It's not going great. It's really not, but we're trying. And you'll never know it works till he's 35. No. You'll never right. know. Like that's the 35 is when you know what worked, what destroyed them, what they're in therapy for. So Right, exactly. So we got a ways to go. And who knows if I'll be around then anyway. Brandy's little baby. Oh my, oh my he's so cute. I want to eat his oh face. My God. I know he's so oh cute. Oh. And I don't really want to eat faces. Like I just say that I, about but that's, cute kids. That's a thing. That's it a is. thing. Yeah. Okay, guys. You don't want to hear us ramble anymore. So just don't forget that there is a book that that I wrote with Robin that is based on the podcast, If These Ovaries Could Talk, The Things We've Learned About Making an LGBTQ Family. And it is available at all major retailers. And if you want to buy it locally, you should check out IndieBound. You can also get the audiobook E. Did you know this? And, oh. and Robin and I um, are the voices. So we can talk you to sleep at night if you'd like. You know what? That sounds perfect. I'm going to download <laughs> it today. Yeah. And don't be afraid to rate and review it on Amazon or Goodreads. That always helps. Yes, and on our social media page, you can follow us at Ovaries mm-hmm. Talk on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and the TikTok. The TikTok. If these ovaries could talk on YouTube. Also, support the podcast and join our community on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Ovaries Talk. Don't yeah. forget, you get bonus content. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. And if you're not following us on social media, you need to get out of your hole and go do that because we need more followers. Get out of your hole. <laughs> come follow Just us. Just kidding. Come follow us. We have fun on social media. So come say hi to us. Thank you to our sponsor, BetterHelp. And a huge thank you, huge, to all of you Patreons who are really stepping up and helping us make this show. Uh, we thank you immensely. And without further ado, it is time. Eggs. Ovaries. ovaries you don't know this you don't know no, this I, was, I do i do fried <laughs> eggs ovaries out <laughs> fried eggs ovaries out if these uh, uh, ovaries could talk they would say eggs ovaries out